So you've downloaded RuleBender 2. What's next? Well, the first thing to note is that RuleBender 2 is built on the Eclipse Rich Client Platform Framework. This means that rather than being built around an individual document, like we would with a Microsoft Office application, we're going to instead build around what's called a project. So the first thing we need to do is create a new project. Either select New Project from the File menu, or right-click in the Navigator and select New Project from the menu. There's only the default project type available, so we'll select it and click Next. We're then asked to give our project a name. Let's work with the EGFRnet sample file, so we'll call our project EGFRnet. When we click Finish, our project is created. Right now our project is empty. When we right-click on the project, we'll see that the main context menu is expanded, and so is the new menu. Now we can add folders and files to our projects. So let's add a folder. The next dialog that opens allows us to name our folder. For consistency, let's call it EGFRnet. When we hit finish, now we have something inside our project. In the navigator, now we can shrink and expand the project, which will be helpful when navigating among a large number of projects. Of course, the most important part are the BNGL files. So let's add a new file to our folder. We can right-click on our folder and select New File. Again, let's call our file EGFRnet, but this time we'll add the .bngl file extension. The .bngl file extension is important, otherwise RuleBender won't recognize your file for simulation and for creating contact maps. Of course, if you forget the .bngl file extension, you can always right-click on the file to rename it, and add the extension from the resulting dialog. Now let me paste in the text from the EGFRnet sample file. You'll notice that the contact map area is still blank. New contact maps are only generated when you save the file you're working on. You can save from the file menu, or you can type Ctrl S or Command S as you normally would in a document. Now we have our contact map, which is just as interactive as it was in RuleBender 1. We can still drag nodes around to organize the layout to our liking. If we right-click on an edge, it brings up a context menu allowing us to select individual rules. Selecting an individual rule highlights the binding sites that are required for the rule. We can also right-click on blank space, bringing up another context menu, allowing us to show states or compartments, as well as to save the contact map to a PNGL image file. One nice addition to RuleBender 2 is that the layout of your contact map will remain constant, even if you close the BNGL file. In order to run the simulator, you'll need to add the path to the simulator. This can be found by clicking on the Window menu, selecting Preferences, and then going to the Simulator submenu. The path to the simulator route will be found inside the RuleBender directory that you downloaded. You'll want to select the BioNetGen folder, as this contains the bin folder we're looking for. Hit OK, and OK again, and now we're ready to simulate. In order to simulate, click the Simulation tab in the top right. Select the file you wish to simulate, and then click Run. The progress of the simulation is shown in the Progress tab in the bottom right, and also is logged to the console at the bottom. When the simulation is finished, a results folder will be added to your project. Expanding this folder will eventually lead you to a folder with a timestamp corresponding to when your simulation was run. Inside this folder, the CDAT and GDAT files contain the plots. You can add or reduce the number of lines shown on the graph by selecting checkboxes. You can also switch the axes of the graph between linear and logarithmic representations. The Species Graph tab in the top right will allow you to view the structure of a species generated during the simulation. Finally, it is worth noting that the interface of RuleBender 2 is completely customizable. All of the views included in the default layout can be resized. If you find that the default layout we provided does not work for you, we can, you can drag the tabs of the views to new locations or you can close them completely. To restore a view that you've accidentally closed, click on the Window menu, 
drop down to show view, and if the view that you're looking for is not listed, you can find it, along with plenty of other views built into RuleBender, in the other menu. After clicking OK, the view will be restored directly to where it was closed. We hope that you enjoy using RuleBender 2, and we always appreciate any feedback.